Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So as I'm sure some of you know, I do a lot of traveling video creation. I'm on the road for about eight to 10 months of the year and I have to carry all of my gear with me all the time. I like to be as minimal and as small as possible. So I always choose the smallest and most compact pieces of equipment and accessories, even if they're not the absolute best. I never want the gear to get in the way of an amazing adventure. So let's chat about the three accessories that are must-haves as it relates to travel filmmaking. So a precursor to the accessory recommendations is that the majority of the content I produced is posted online whether that be for my own social media account or other companies' social media accounts. With the nature of social media, it of course, A, needs to be outstanding, but B, consistent and frequent. So producing fast and on the fly is very important. I can't be spending weeks perfecting and editing something that won't stick around that long. All right, that brings me to my camera accessory item number one, and that is the Jiyun Crane. I have the Crane version one, because it has no problem holding the weight of my Lumix GH5. However, if you have a heavier camera, then I would recommend the Crane 2 or the Crane 3. And the Crane 3 is, oof, just have a look. Links in the description. Some of the features on it are amazing. And its competitor, the Ronin S, I don't see why you would want that. It's bigger and it's more expensive. And as for the horizontal spinning camera, yeah, sure, it could be good for some shots. However, it is already played out and a bit gimmicky. Okay, so gimbals are great, but we also have to remember they have downsides as well. On some press trips I've been on, I see people with the cameras on the gimbal permanently. Majority of the time, the camera's on the gimbal. This is so limiting. It removes the opportunity to get depth of field, close macro shots, and free movement shots with your handheld camera. The gimbal just produces a very similar type of shot every time. In my opinion, a gimbal's amazing for a few reasons. And now I'll show you what I mean. Getting fast paced footage at higher speeds, smoothly circling objects, which you couldn't really do normally. And my favorite one that I use a lot in my Morocco video is you lock that vertical axis and get some smooth hyperlapses. Hyperlapses by photos are amazing, but sometimes they can take up to an hour to shoot and the equivalent in post-processing. So gimbals are a great addition to the bag. However, don't overuse them. There are other ways to get stable footage as well with your camera strap or just perfecting that ghost walk. Okay, so that brings us to item number two, and that is the variable ND filter. Now the purest of photographers would be shocked that I would recommend a variable ND. So variable meaning that the ND spins to create different stops of light. The best photographers have multi ND packs with like five to 10 filters for every condition of lighting. However, for what I'm creating, this would be a waste of time. For example, let's say we're shooting a video in the cloudy daytime. The sun is coming in and out from behind the clouds. I have someone talking to the camera, so I want the f-stop to be 2.8 or lower, opening the aperture right up. I wanna keep my shutter speed at double the frame rate, so 50, so that it doesn't appear jittery. I wanna keep that natural motion blur. Of course, the footage will be overexposed, so all I need to do is spin that ND filter to the perfect exposure. Now let's say a cloud rolls in and covers the sun. Now my footage is underexposed but all I need to do is easily roll back that ND filter and I have the perfect exposure once again. There's no way I'm changing a separate ND filter for every shot. All right, so this brings us to accessory number three, and this is the one I'm most excited about. And it is the Outex water weatherproof case. So I wanna take my camera underwater and get some crispy, shallow depth of field footage. Something the GoPro just cannot do. I'll show you some footage now of what I mean. This coming March, I wanna head to the Holy Festival in India. This is my chance to get some absolutely amazing footage of the celebration without the worry of getting my camera completely destroyed. The best thing about this case is that it's soft and easy to travel with and relatively cheap. The hard cases that I see the pros using are enormous and they cost a pretty penny. Both of those things won't work for me as I wanna stay light on the back and on the wallet. 
Oh yeah, and this company pretty much has a mold for every model of camera. I'll put all the links in the descriptions to the items that I'm talking about. All right, that's it for this video. I hope it helped and I hope you consider adding some of these accessories to your camera bag to upgrade the quality of footage you're putting out. Like, comment, subscribe. It really helps so that I can continue to make more videos like this and see you guys in the next one.